Now let's get back to those ends. Now that you have all the compositing almost done, you might think, all right, I'm done now, I'm cool, I'm chill with my ends now. But wait, there's one more thing you need to seal the deal. Grain. Now, grain helps make the images all look like they were shot in one camera by giving it the appropriate camera capturing grain filter, making it really look like then it was all happening in real time, and it was simply captured and shot on that one camera. But first, you would have to remove the grain from your existing footage before adding any grain from the appropriate footage. Now, most of the time the grain comes from the background, due to the size and space it takes up in the frame, but in our case, we will be using the foreground plate's grain since our background plate doesn't appear to have any obvious or useful camera grain. So for all intents and purposes, we shall be using the foreground for our grain reference. Now, I know that in After Effects, you have the option of both the manual grain add, where you go into each RGB channel and adjust the values, or an auto grain addition mode. But in Nuke, however, the best and most accurate outcome you could get for grain would be using the grain node and doing so manually. So let's do that very quickly. Now first, let's group our layers properly to minimize the multiple nodes of grain all over the place. So I have to know which is which in terms of which is in the foreground, which is in the background, which is in the midground, in order to add the grain properly on all of these elements together. Now we will first start disconnecting the lady from the merge, so let me just do that. So I'm going to disconnect her, and that's because she's actually in the midground, but these water particles appear to be in the background. So I'm actually going to move the entire set of this lady here to somewhere that's more representative of where she is in the image. So I'm just going to select all the nodes related to her, move her somewhere here. I'm going to move my viewer as well. I'm going to delete this little dot here. And these are in my foreground, so I'm just going to move this down slightly. Now I want to make sure that my background image is with my background particles, so I'm put these two together. Let's see how this looks. Okay. I'm going to delete this merge node for my water particles if you had them. And I'm actually going to merge out here. Click on this merge node, hit M. And these guys are actually going to be coming somewhere around here. So after I finish my Luma key of the skies, I'm going to add these in so that they form the background. Now just to make sure that I know this very clearly, I'm actually going to rename this merge node as BG Merge. And we'll again talk about proper organizations like what this node is that I use in order to organize our scene better. But for now, let's temporarily just do this. Okay, so the lady is in the midground. Where's the final merge node? Somewhere there. Foreground, particles, save. This guy is going to actually be in the foreground, so I'm going to detach this. I'm going to make sure that this merge node is okay. Alright, create a new merge node under that. A for foreground, B for background. So this is a bit far right now. I'm actually going to move this down. And then press and hold control to create a little anchor point. Move this somewhere here. And then. I will have this B pipe coming from this lady right here. I'm going to double click this, name this midground merge. And of course, finally, foreground merge. And again, this is just so you know where each element is in the foreground, midground, background. So you can actually add the grain a lot easier compared to trying to find things fumbling around. All right, so I'm going to actually delete this node. Now with that more or less said, let's start working with the background first by degraining our footage. So I'm going to go to where my BG merge is, somewhere over here, double click. And in Nuke, you have two options for degrain. Basically, degrain blue and degrain simple. Now degrain blue, which the name is kind of self-explanatory, it basically degrain solely the blue channel, which tends to be the channel where the most grain occurs. So how can we confirm that theory? Now I'm going to click one on the merge node and go to the RGB channels for all of my background element. RGB. Let's zoom into the bridge a little bit. R, this is red. G, B. You can see 
blue is where most of the grain happens. So what degrain blue does is that it basically degrains your blue channel aggressively. So if I set this to viewer 1, viewer 2, you can see the difference, right? In the blue channel. And how do you know that this is the blue channel? It'll show right here that this is the blue channel. Okay, now the one we're going to use actually is degrain simple. So hit tab, search for degrain simple and plug this in. And this is uh, pretty simple actually, really, <laughs> which is a very simple way of basically degraining your channel simplistically. It basically handles all channels simply and on that note, we'll just actually keep it simple and use that simple. Simple? <laughs> anyway, with degrain simple sets, I'm just going to move this over here because I know I'm going to use this. Now what you want to do is make sure your degrain doesn't completely kill the virtual ends and the details because if you degrain this aggressively, let's just say I degrain it like crazy, let's say I'm going to the red channel, I degrain it so much, and I view two, you can see how all the details have been washed out. So what you want to do is very carefully go to each RGB channel and adjust your degrains very delicately as if they're a delicate flower. So. I'm going to have a side-by-side -side comparison, so I'm going to hit 1 for the original merge, 2 for degrain, hit D back and forth to see how much details you're erasing with the degrain. There's actually not that much grain on the background, so I think we are cool with this. Don't want to lose those details. Perhaps all 0 0.5 might actually work. Let's see, G or B. Now, whenever you're adjusting your grain, make sure you're always playing this back in order to see the grain or the degrain effect in action. Now, it does appear we have a little bit of grain, so I'm actually going to add back some more values, making sure that I don't accidentally kill a lot of details away. This is also where A-B testing becomes really useful because you can do this for grain as well and compare side to side before and after in Nuke. Just make sure that you have the two viewer inputs properly set and they're connected to the same exact resolution of the image in order to make the comparison more effective. Okay, now let's add the grain from the actual foreground plate. Selecting on my D-grain symbol, hit tab and search for grain. Now it's going to kind of reset the RAM preview a bit. I'm just going to hit K to stop the playback. Now, how you would want to grain this would depend on many factors, but the basics of it is, does your key of the green screen plate here affect your grain? And do you care that it affects your grain? So what I mean is that whenever you key something, sometimes you tend to actually affect the grain as well. And you have to be very careful of that because your final keyed lady might have a very different grain because some of the grain has a little bit of green in it. Now, most of the time, the answer is yes to those two questions. But for the sake of keeping things simple here in this course, let's use our key clip as our grain reference. So I'm going to set my first viewer input for the grain, hit 1. And number 2 is going to be the one with the lady in it. I'm going to hit W in the viewer to compare. Make sure that my opacity is set to 0 for this little gizmo. I'm going to rotate this around somewhere like this. And now what you want to do is basically go to each RGB channel and adjust the grain size and everything else. But before we start adjusting, here is a quick overview on what these properties all mean. Firstly, and obviously, size of grain. Now, if I adjust this, it basically means how large or small I want the grain sizes to be. Irregularity of grain is basically how chaotic or uniform they are. So if I'm growing this down, it's very uniform. As you can see, the pattern is very clear. Now, intensity is how obvious the grain is on screen and on camera. So if I increase this by a lot, you can see the grain becomes really obvious. Decrease this becomes so very subtle. So I'm going to start with the red and actually compare and adjust these whilst during playback. And that's important because you want to know how those grains would move, kind of like ends. You want to make sure you see that the actions and the motions are moving similarly. And you can't tell that based on the still frame. So I'm going to do that very quickly. Okay, that looks like a huge grain. Make these nice numbers just because I like nice numbers. All right, let's go to the green. I think they're all the same, it seems. 
So I'm just going to set them all as the same for now. B. Again, if ever in doubt, remember that for grain, less is more. Just like ants. Less is, well, <laughs> better if it is crawling all over your food, that is. Now, if using the different channels to see the grain better doesn't work for you, you could always increase exposure in the composition panel to enhance your ability to see those grain points. For example, I could increase the gain, I could increase the gamma, whichever one you prefer. Just don't forget to reset it by clicking on them whenever you are done, so you're not confused. Okay, so after you are done with your grain and you're satisfied, hit W to close that comparison tool. I'm going to actually set the input here and play this back very quickly now. Now, once you are satisfied, what you want to do is basically copy and paste that node right after your foreground element. Now, the reason why we don't have to worry about the foreground element having a grain is because, again, it is a CG element, and most CG elements don't come with a grain unless you have a really weird 3D artist who renders grain with your CG element. Now, remember, there are many ways to do this. You could have just degrain each set of elements and then add an overall grain at the end. So basically, I degrain everything together and then I add an overall grain. But at this learning stage, it's good to go through the hoops. Just make sure that your background merges back out to the midground and foreground plates too. So let's just see how that looks. Over here with the grain. I actually want to see if the grain's even applied. I'm just going to change my input and then play. All right, now if you are all good and happy, then you can finally be done with your virtual ends and finally say that you are done. Woohoo! Man, <laughs> it's been a long journey, huh? Well, in the next lesson, we are going to go back into a bit of blabbering and theory basics. Do I hear a boo coming along? <laughs> I hope not, because it's important. With the understanding of log versus linear images in Nuke and its relevance in film and visual effects.